to God be the glory. Uh, thank you, Lord. Oh, thank you, Lord. I, I like that even better. So thank you, Lord, is what we're here about today, to be able to thank our God, to be able to worship our God, to be able to express the love that we have not only for our God, but for each other as well. Amen? Amen. So good morning, church. How are you doing today? We're here, yes, yes. Yes, we're here, and we thank God that we are here as well. So our worship will begin with the introduction. The prophet Jeremiah speaks of the incurable wounds of his suffering, yet finds in God's word the delight of his heart. When Peter doesn't grasp Jesus' words about suffering, Jesus tells the disciples they will find their lives in losing them. Now, such sacrificial love is described by Paul when he urges us to associate with the lowly and not repay evil with evil. In worship, we gather as a community that we might offer ourselves for the sake of our suffering world. The call to worship. The spirit descends like a dove, bringing peace to unite the world in a just and caring community. The spirit comes like a breath, bringing life to renew the people of God. The spirit spreads like fire, bringing energy for witnessing to the love of God. Spirit of the living God, come to us and transform our lives by your power. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is true. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Hmm? <laughs> Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have hoarded your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And our gathering him is victory is mine. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the peace from above and for our salvation let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for the peace of the whole world and for the well-being of the church of god and for the unity of all let us pray to the lord lord have mercy for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the lord lord have mercy help save comfort and defend us gracious lord Our prayer of the day. Oh God, we thank you for your son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. He humbled us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay, and now we have our announcements, starting with choir rehearsal will resume next Sunday, September 10th at 9.15 a.m. The Lutheran Men in Mission Monthly Fellowship Breakfast will take place on Saturday, September 9th at 9 a.m. at the Imperial Diner in Freeport. All men of Good Shepherd are invited to attend. Please contact... Please call the church office if you would like to read the lessons once every four to six weeks. The Finance Committee reports that we received tithes and offerings of $2,387 for the week ending 827. If you would like to adopt a bill in full or in part, please contact the church office. And now the announcement of the Holy Land Pilgrimage, April 9th through 19th next year, 2024, from JFK. The cost is $3,990 for a double occupancy, airfare, room transportation, entrance fees, and meals. For single occupancy available, an additional $850. Pre and post excursions available. It's endorsed by the Metropolitan New York Synod, ELCA, Bishop Paul Eigensteiner, and Pastor Kader Kalilia. For more information, contact Pastor Kalilia, Redeemer, St. John Lutheran Church. The numbers are there. Good Shepherd travel at that number. In the calendar of events, Saturday, September 9th, there's the Lutheran Men and Mission Breakfast. Next Sunday, September 10th, it's Pentecost 15, and at 10 a.m., our service. And that will conclude our announcements for the day. Are there any other announcements? Yes. Okay. Good morning, Good. church family. I'd just like to say thank you to God. And I'd also like to say thank you to my church family who was so supportive of my family during my dad's, uh, the passing of my dad. The love and support that Good Shepherd showed. I just want to say thank you. Um, thank you, and no special order, but you know, 
Pastor Linda, thank you so much for the support for the family. You know, Pastor Taylor, Pastor Perusi. I'd really like to thank the sound people who came out, you know, Zoomed for us. Uh, the ushers who cut their vacation short just to be here. Um, and Vielka, my sister who held my hand through this all, every step of the way, I thank you. You know, church family, very supportive. Good Shepherd family, I just felt the, you know, felt the love. The deacons who came out, Jolene who sang her heart out, Dr. Brown who played like never before. I just wanted to say thank you on behalf of my family and I truly love you and so thank you so much for your support. Amen. Any other announcements at this time? Thank you. Good to see you. Our work will continue with the blessing of the lector. Welcome home. <laughs> Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from you. Bless Robin, who will read to us the scriptures. Make us hunger for the word of life. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning, church family. Uh, the first reading will be from Jeremiah in the 15th chapter, verses 15 through 21. Jeremiah's delight in the word of the Lord is contradicted by the heaviness of God's hand upon him and God's seemingly unfaithfulness. God's tough love to Jeremiah says that if he repents, he will be allowed to continue in his strenuous ministry ministry. Jeremiah is strengthened by the simple words, I am with you. The reading. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbiddance, forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffered insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart, for I am called by your name. O Lord God of hosts, I did not sit in the company of merry makers, nor did I rejoice. Under the weight of your hands I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wounds incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are me, truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore thus said the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worth, worthless, you shall serve as my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail over you, for I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm is 26, verses 1 through 8. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. 
I have walked faithfully with you. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. The second lesson is a reading from Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 12. Paul presents benchmarks for faithful relationships with Christians and non-Christians. Love is the unflagging standard of our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics, but seek to overcome it with good. While Christians cannot control the actions and attitudes of others, we seek to live at peace with all people. The reading. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another is showing honor. Do not, do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haunted, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble inside of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourself, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing so, doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Halle, halle, halle. as you're able for the reading of the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. From that time on, after, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and high priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. 
Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. My dear friends, grace, peace, and love to you from our God. Amen. Although the, word, the specific word Savior does not appear in Matthew, one of the essential roles of Matthew's Messiah is as our Savior. From the beginning of Matthew's Gospel, the story is told from the angel's assurance to Joseph that Jesus' role was set to be a Savior. We are told of Jesus' saving work and the forgiveness of sin in Matthew 1:21. Again and again, Jesus' healing ministry is linked with themes of salvation and the forgiveness of sin. Your faith has saved you in 9.22. The promise to the disciples who endure faithful to the end is that they will be saved. As our Savior, Jesus was born to die. Our gospel message continues from last week. Paul's 12th chapter in the letter to the church in Rome and the 16th chapter of Matthew's gospel both seek to open to us the mysteries of a life that is lived with God. Here is the heart of the good news. Characteristically, it is good news that sounds like bad news before we find a way to internalize it, live it, and experience it as a truly good news. These are not theories or speculations that are placed before us. In fact, it would be difficult to find two passages more central to the gospel of Jesus Christ than the two before us this 14th Sunday after Pentecost. Yet it is hard to imagine a passage subject to more misunderstanding than Matthew 16, 21 to 27. And it is equally hard to imagine a passage more ignored than the 12th chapter of Romans. Let's look at what happens to Peter. One moment he seems to grasp who Jesus really is and what he is up to. But as soon as Jesus makes it clear that he must go to Jerusalem to suffer and be killed, Peter just cannot accept it. And as often as we read and reread it, one suspects that we are all feeling a little more like Peter than we ever will admit to publicly or in church. Now must is a crucial word here. Some translations say necessary, that, Jesus, that it is necessary for Jesus to go to Jerusalem. Then there is another one that says Jesus had to go to Jerusalem. And Peter does not grasp that. Jesus must go to Jerusalem? Jesus had to go to Jerusalem, or where would we be? On what hope would we have? Where is the grace and the mercy that we have come to rely on? Who would we call on as the assurance that God really is with us? I don't even know if there would be a church if, Drew, if Jesus did not make that trip to Jerusalem. And at this time in our reading, Jesus kind of switches roles from being a teacher to preparing the disciples for what is to come. Jesus gives the disciples a gift of revelation or a special knowledge. And at the heart of the revelation is Jesus' identity as Messiah, which is tied to the must of his suffering and death in Jerusalem. In the blink of an eye, Peter goes from being a rock, the rock and the foundation of the new community of the good news to becoming a stumbling block or a scandal. Did you notice in the reading from the gospel that Peter took Jesus aside to persuade Jesus that his words cannot be true? Simon Peter is trying to tell Jesus what to do and what is to be. And at this point in time, Peter doesn't have a clue, yet he is telling Jesus, no, we have to do it this way, trying to 
trying to persuade Jesus to follow the path that he, Peter, would like Jesus to take. Peter would like Jesus to go to Jerusalem and crush those in political and economic and religious power. That, after all, would be the appropriate doing of God's anointing, would it not? The Jewish community had been waiting for a savior to come and rescue them from the hand of oppression, and they thought, the disciples, that it would be Jesus, who would set them free from a physical standpoint. But as we all know, Jesus refuses to play that game. Jesus accuses Peter of being a stumbling block, focused on human things rather than on divine things. Could it be that everyone should have known that the purpose was salvation and not destruction? Jesus does not have an army. He wields no weapons of mass or even limited destruction. And during the three years of his ministry as we know it, did you know that Jesus was poor, basically homeless? He has no place to call home. He has no place to rest his head at the end of the day. And Jesus relies on God and God's people. He relies on a community of giving and sharing. He relies on the kindness of others, God, and not of himself. And whatever he has, he is depicted as gladly giving away for the sake of others and for the sake of the good news. What is ours is yours, he is frequently pictured as saying. And just in case Peter and the other disciples do not get the picture, Jesus promises to return to repay everyone for what has been done. So what will it be? Jesus tells the disciples he must go to Jerusalem. It had to happen. There was no way for salvation to occur. Now, a pastor friend of mine said last week, you remember the title about the rock and identifying who Jesus was um, when he asked that question. She said that she used just the title, just the title of a Bill Withers song. Who is he and what is he to you? And a divine sense, not in the way that it is portrayed in the song. Is Jesus saying and asking the disciples and us, will you pick up your cross and follow me? Or does the thought of gaining the whole world or at least some sub sub substantial part of it still appealing to us? Do we have the faith and the stamina enough to go to Jerusalem? So what will it be? Will we pick up our cross and follow Jesus? Either you're on the road or you're off the road. The journey starts right now, church. And then St. Paul says, we are not to think too highly of ourselves or reach too far, but instead to accept and rejoice in the measure of faith that God has assigned to us all. And it is Paul who reminds us that we will not all travel to Jerusalem the same way. We do not have to march in lockstep together, but rather we are to exercise the unique gifts we have each been given in our own and unique ways. Not everyone has the same gifts. Not everyone has to follow Jesus in the same way as the next person. And the best news of all is that no one is expecting to do anything that God has not already equipped her or him to do. So Christians, beware, however, because Jesus makes it abundantly clear that we are each of us expected to do no less than what God has equipped us to do. We can assume that carrying our crosses and becoming rocks instead of stumbling blocks, is entirely wrapped up in being aware of what gifts we have been given and to exercise them faithfully. Now, that's a key word there. We need to exercise those gifts faithfully in a cross-filled life of sacrifice and love. One of the images I like to use when we're talking about this and we're thinking of the cross is when we're thinking vertically, 
when we're thinking vertically, we're thinking of God, and we're thinking of God loving us. And so that's the vertical part of the cross. But then when you get to the horizontal part, that's where I love you and you love me. So that's the horizontal part. So when you put the love of God with the love of each other, that is the cross, and that is the good news, and that is what we are talking about today. So church, right confession of Jesus Christ must be joined with right deeds of love and justice and love and kindness that is extended to all. All, of course, meaning all persons and all of creation. We have a hard time using our gifts in the service for other persons and are entirely reckless in the extension of our gifts toward all of creation. The further good news is that people like Peter and Paul picked up their crosses and gained a clearer understanding of the gifts that they had been given. And as Jesus commanded, they became true disciples of Jesus the Christ. It is this last imperative that we have perhaps most often misunderstood. For it is like Peter that we too are commanded to journey with the man who must go to Jerusalem to confront the evil in the world and bring salvation to those in need. Friends, by the mercy of God, we must present our bodies and ourselves as a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable to God, which is our spiritual worship. That includes doing the things St. Paul suggests in the letter to the Romans, for that is who we are. We are God's holy and acceptable people. Our faithfulness to becoming the people of God that God, cre that God created us to be will be repaid in terms beyond all that we can ever hope or imagine. All the baptized have been marked by the cross, and in the mystery of the resurrection, this cross is the way of life. Perhaps the cross we are called to carry is someone else's, which we willingly help to carry. But yes, initially, the disciples didn't get it but they traveled the road anyway. And things did not turn out as they expected. And a little further down the road, we will continue the journey because the story does not end here. And we'll discover what happens once again. So stay tuned. And likewise, our story does not end here in this place and this time. It is still being written. And I think that we'll be okay in the by and by because of Jesus' righteousness. Now please hear the words of Maya Angelou. I am grateful to have been loved and to be able to love because love liberates. It doesn't just hold that ego. Love liberates, it doesn't bind. So we are invited in hope to be the kind of hope that Jesus commends us to be. Imagine how the Son of Man coming into his kingdom comes in small and great ways into our lives already, and how that promise offers assurance by God's Messiah, and it drives us into a hopeful future, even when our present troubles are engulfing us. After all, Jesus walked this path before us. He has gone before us. Now we will follow him with faith. And oftentimes when we combine different forms of spiritual disciplines, you know, prayer, meditation, music, rest, journaling, it helps us on a spiritual level. And it draws us closer to the things that are important in our lives. And I think you know where I'm going, to a spiritual that expresses who we are and our relationship with Jesus. The title of this hymn is Falling in Love with Jesus, which was written by Jonathan Butler. Please hear a few of the lyrics. Falling in love 
with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms, I feel protected. There's no other place I'd rather be. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected. There's no place that I'd rather be. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever done. Oh Lord, there's no place I'd rather, rather be. Now I'm assuming we're all here together, both in person or via Zoom, traveling to Jerusalem. We all feel the same way, so I'm going to replace that I with the we. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing we've ever, ever done. In his arms, we feel protected. There's no other place we'd rather be. Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing that we've ever, ever done. In his arms, we feel protected. In his arms, we're never disconnected. There's no place we'd rather be because falling in love with Jesus is the best thing we've ever done. Oh Lord, there's no place we'd rather be. So I'm going to say this morning, Good Shepherd, are we willing to pick up our cross and follow the God, our God, Jesus Christ, to Jerusalem? Are we willing to take up the challenge to do what is said in the book of Romans by St. Paul? Are we ready to walk that rocky road that we know will take us to a place of salvation? Are we ready to go to Jerusalem? Amen. of God and we feel that amazing grace how sweet the sound truly is so let us confess what we believe using the words of the Apostles Creed I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy and universal church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated.
our prayers of intercession. Remembering the caring and generous work of God, we pray for the church, creation, and the needs of our neighbors. God of life, your words are the joy at the heart of your church. Draw the seeker to you. Place messages of hope and healing in the mouths of your witnesses and open your children to your truth when we stumble. Merciful God, receive our prayers. God of steadfast love, renew the earth by your spirit. The lands and oceans reveal the beauty of your creation. Challenge us to live humbly and peaceably as part of your world. Merciful God, receive our prayers. God of patience, lead those who govern to hold fast to what is good. Guide them to show honor to the people in their care. Overcome evil in all nations and grant peace to peoples and places mired in conflict. Merciful God, receive our prayers. God of deliverance, remember all who are suffering lonely and in pain. Liberate your people being insulted, persecuted, or in the grasp of the ruthless. Give endurance to workers who persevere on this Labor Day and ensure fair wages and safe working environments. Merciful God, receive our prayer. God of justice, Equip the congregation to boldly follow you in uncertain times and to remain faithful in prayer when facing challenges. Show us how best to love and care for one another and our communities. Merciful God. Prayers for healing and comfort are asked for the Tucker family and for the Baptiste family. Buster, Janice, Chatina, Amina, Father Glanville Joseph, Bridget, Jerome, Nancy, and dear. James and Eleanor, Dwayne, Virginia, Queen, Heather, Hazel, Joseph, Sherry, Irvin, Julia, Lee, Pastor Brenda, Madeline, Dorette, Zenitha, Nora, Cecil, Wade, Emmy. Prayers are asked for Diane for her September 15th surgery. Are there other prayers from the congregation or online. God of glory, we give thanks for the saints who now dwell with you in splendor. Nurture us in faith until the day we join their heavenly song. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remember us according to your steadfast love as we offer these and the prayers of our heart, trusting in your compassion made known through Jesus Christ. Amen. Church, the peace of the Lord be with you all and also with you. Thank you.
Let us share God's peace. disciples we take care of our God we take care of our church so let us be generous in our giving that others may see in us the transforming power of God let us be lavish in our gifts that others may draw life from the bounty of God's blessing you can either make your um, your offering um, online you know how to do that on the back of the bulletin is that QR code is that correct Tom the QR code um, send a check to the office. I believe that there is a basket in the back if you would like to make your donation, um, your offering in the back as well. Amen? So, let us pray together. God of power, God of plenty, all things belong to you. We bring your gifts to the table that all might be fed. 
Form us into the body of your beloved Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please stand as you're able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing that always and everywhere to give thanks to you, living God. Time after time you draw us here to inspire us, feed us, and save us. Especially when our love fails, you are here steadfast and true. You created this world and you called it good. You, cre you created us to proclaim your good to all. Holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit that is poured out on all nations in the night in which he was betrayed. Our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ is died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O oh God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on all gathered under the sound of my voice and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us. Send us forth, burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With all beloved gathered under the sound of my voice and your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you. O oh God, blessed and holy trinity, now and forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us, Lamb of God, you take away the sin. 
stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Blessed be your name, O God. Blessed be your name, O God. For we have feasted on your word, Christ Jesus, the joy and delight of our hearts. Strengthened by this food, send us together the world to your banquet, when none are left out and all are satisfied. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. People of God, go out into the world in peace, have courage, hold on to what is good, return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering, honor all people, love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the Spirit who lives in you, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. God is at work in you. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. God be with you. God.